Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, this eMarketer Academy webinar. I look so much forward to taking you through the topic today of lead scoring, a brand new feature that we just released in eMarketer. And um, you can say it's been one that we've been waiting for and wanting to do for a long time. And finally, it's here, and I can't wait to share it with, uh, with you guys uh today on the webinar uh i think it's a feature that many of you have anticipated and expected as well for a while because we're a lot of people on the show today and that is just fantastic um so my name is klaus uh i am uh, one of the speakers here at the e-marketeer academy taking you through what uh, the ins and outs of our products and cases with customers trying to inspire you to get most value out of e-marketeer or if you're not an e-marketeer user just get some inspiration on the topics that we cover in these webinars. Uh, please do reach out to me on LinkedIn or email or whatever. Uh, if you have questions about marketing, e-marketeer, the webinar, some feedback for me maybe, I would love to hear from you. It is really your feedback and inputs that are shaping these webinars and what we're doing with our content and how we are trying to inspire you. So let me know what you think and what you would like to see in the near future. I hope by now that you're seeing my slides and hearing my voice and everything is coming through. Um, we are expected to be 45 minutes on the webinar today. Um, I will certainly stay on after that. So if you have any questions that I haven't answered during the webinar, let me know. Do type your questions into the uh, questions box uh, in the GoToWebinar control panel. Other participants can't see your questions, so don't be shy. Um, but I will do my best to uh, answer the questions during the webinar and certainly at the Q&A session at the end. If there are some questions I miss, uh, I'm trying to, uh, to keep track of uh, the stuff that's coming in. But if there are things that I'm missing, I will certainly get back to you on, the, um, on, the, on email after the webinar. So don't worry about that. So just send me your questions and we will try to make this a dialogue as best possible. All right, so the objectives today are really to obviously dive into lead scoring and what this is all about. And since this is a new feature, um, many of you may not have been lead scoring at all before. We will go into um, some insights into what is lead scoring, how should you go about um, creating your lead scoring strategy and tactics, what are some insights that you may wanna have before you start out, uh, and certainly what are the pitfalls and mistakes that you wanna avoid doing. So, so that's the first thing we'll spend some time on. And then um, we'll learn how to decide which actions, which data points, which attributes you would wanna assign scores to. And of course, we'll be looking hands-on at the tool, how you actually go ahead and uh, implement your lead scoring model, your lead scoring strategy in eMarketeer. What are the features that are available now? Where do you see them in the app? How do you set scores? And how do you filter out your leads that are you are now scoring so you can see which of your leads are the hottest leads in the contact database. So that's what we'll be covering, what your lead scoring strategy is and how you create it, how you apply, uh, apply it to emote here, and how you see your leads at the very end there. All right. Again, shoot your questions my way. If you have them, I will do my best to keep track of everything that's coming in. So. Without further ado, what is lead scoring? What is this thing all about? And how do we go about setting it up? So in a nutshell, lead scoring is a process that helps you identify people who are most likely to buy your product or service. And also weed out the ones that are not qualified, not interesting. So it's really a matter of focusing your effort, figuring out which people are most interesting to me um, who are most interested in me and whom with the given with the limited time I have available, whom should I focus on in my sales work and in my marketing efforts? So it helps the sales team, the, uh, the pre-sales team and the marketers really focus on the most important opportunities in their, uh, in their work essentially to close more deals and to be more relevant when they go into dialogues with potential customers. That's what the whole thing is about. So it's really a method of determining how sales ready your prospective customers are. And the way you do that is by assigning points or taking away points from the leads based on their profile and their actions. 
Um, so why do we go about doing this? Well, the the uh, the um, idea of focusing your time should be the key essence here, of course. But there are some really nice side effects of this. First and foremost, it helps you align between sales and marketing. When you, as a joint activity, work on your lead scoring with sales, you get an alignment between the two teams with regards to what is important. What does sales see as qualifications in a lead? What does marketing focus on when they try to nurture leads and deliver leads to sales? Are we really having the same idea, the same picture with regards to which actions, which profiles, which characteristics are important when we look at our prospect clients, our leads? So working together with sales, understanding which content you have in your marketing arsenal converts better, which types of persons are more likely to buy from you, which types of industries should we really be focusing on. The more clear you get on that together with your sales team, the better you are equipped to design your score rules and the better alignment you have between marketing and sales. What is actually a qualified lead? That should be a unanimous answer regardless whether you ask sales or marketing. Uh, the second trait here is you get to focus on the most relevant leads. Like It would be wonderful if you had all the time in the world to really uh, turn any, every stone and look at every contact that is coming our way. But we have to focus, and time is money, so we have to make sure that we're looking at the right people at the right time in order not to waste our time. Um, so it's really, again, a matter of identifying which leads should we be looking at now. And it's not only nice with the timing for sales when it's at the right time to contact a lead, but it's also nice for the leads, right? When you're at the very start of your customer journey, of your of your uh, research or your information gathering as a potential customer to a product or service, you don't want to be sold to right away. You want to figure out if this is the right product or service for you. You want to dig around and figure out a little bit. You don't want to be called cold canvassed by a salesperson just because you sign up for a newsletter. So in order to make the best purchasing or decision-making experience for your prospective customers, you would want to make sure that you hit them at the right time, not when they're just getting started, getting to know you, but when things have warmed up a little bit and there is a relationship between your communication, communications between your marketing content and the leads, that should be the right time to engage with the leads. So it's good for the alignment. It's good for helping salespeople uh, focus their time and effort. And it's good for the prospects because they get contacted, they get engaged with, with sales when it is best for them. Okay, so with that established, how do we go about scoring leads? Well, you assign points, right? It's pretty straightforward. So you assign numerical values to characteristics or actions or behavior that you deem are important. And there are two specific types of scores that are kind of the, the, the broadest categories here. The first one is explicit scoring. And it's based on how well your leads match certain criteria in their profile like their company size, their industry, and so on. So those are the explicit scoring rules that you would want to create, looking at profiles of persons and companies. And then there are the implicit scoring rules or the implicit scoring sets that are based on behavior. What do these persons do? What do they click on? What do they visit? What do they answer? How often do they do it? And so on. So the explicit scoring deals with who they are or where they work, and the implicit scoring deals with what they do. So let's have a look at some um, uh, of some examples there. Um, the explicit scoring examples could be everything you have on the contact card, for instance, in uh, in eMarketeer, right? So like titles, roles, industries, company size, uh, location, country. Uh, or just the fact that you have data, like the fact that you have a job title or you have a mobile phone uh, on the contact card, uh, card you could assign points to. So this is basically everything you have on the contact card are the things there that you could score on just by the fact that you have the data or that you have specific data. Maybe you're charging, uh, you want to contact people in Sweden that work in marketing. So you would look at country as a geographic location and score on that or you would look at their job title to, to look for marketing titles there. 
And then there are the implicit scoring examples. And then as I mentioned, this is everything that they do, right? So where do they click? Where do they visit? Do they open your emails? Do they answer the surveys? Do you register for webinars and so on, right? So who are they? Where do they work? Explicit scores and implicit scores. What are they doing with your marketing content in how do they engage with you? Um, you could say that you would often score more points uh, with implicit scoring, as mentioned here, uh, it contributes more to the overall lead score because this happens over time again and again and again. And for the explicit scoring, you just get score for your title once. But, you know, there may be explicit scores that you really want to uh, give a lot of value to. For instance, if there is smack center of the correct industry, you may want to uh, uh, add a lot of points based on that. So it really depends on where you weigh your scores and what is important when you create these scores. Um, so how do you know what to score on? Because as you can see, there are a lot of variables here and you can add as many scores uh, as you would like in eMarketeer. So what? how do you go about figuring out what to score on? The neat thing here is your customers, or rather your existing customer database, will actually tell you and give you hints on what to score on. So you want to look at your customers that you have today, or maybe the last 20 customers you have won, or whatever is a feasible data set for you, and look at their profiles and demographics. Which industries are they in? Where are they located? Which company sizes are they? Uh, what type of profiles have does the people that you've been um, successfully selling to have? Which job titles do they have? Which seniority do they have? And so on. So you would want to look at your ideal customers and learn from their behavior and from their profiles to figure out what to score new leads on. This will help you create personas uh, that are kind of archetypical people that would be ideal for you to attract in your marketing and then when they are good and ready hand them over to sales so look at your current customers talk to your sales teams talk to your account managers which people are we most successful in selling to where do we have the best fit between our product or services and sales processes with which people with which target group <clears throat> next thing you want to look at is the marketing engagement that you've had the people that you've been selling to successfully, which type of marketing content did they engage in? Were they webinar participants or maybe ebook downloaders or were they product samplers? Figure out what marketing activities you have done previously that were most successful and that have the highest probability of leading to a sale. Obviously, uh, there is a difference between signing up to a newsletter, which is a pretty cold uh, beginning of customer journey uh, 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 action maybe, and then requesting a product demo or trial, right? That's closer to a sale. So you want to figure out which part of your marketing content of your uh, uh, marketing material you have that should be given scores. And then um, lastly, you would want to look at how close an action is to a sale. And this was back to the newsletter sign up versus the product demo. Uh, some actions are closer to a potential sales than others. And you should be able to score these differently. So the ones that are really good indicators of somebody being ready to engage in a sales dialogue should obviously get more points uh, to, to the leads. Uh, so go ahead and analyze your customer profiles and their interaction with your marketing content to figure out what should be good things to score on, both on the behavioral side of things and on the profile side of things. That is a good way to start your uh, lead scoring um, process. So what you could end up with is something like this. It's just an example. You would start building some personas or some uh, typical characteristics that you would be looking at. So for instance, up here we have the uh, uh, the explicit scores like title. Uh, in this case, we would look for marketing people in a specific country, in a specific industry, and so on. And then there are the uh, the implicit scores. What did they do? Subscribe to newsletter should give some points. Participation in webinar should give points. And website visits, for instance. So as you can formulate these personas, it will give you an idea of what to put into your lead score sets and how you should be applying scores to uh, to these different rules. 
Um, I mean, we've seen some really cool examples with customers who are working with this type of activity, building personas that really spills into a lot of areas in your marketing that is effectful. Like if these are the two important personas for you, do you have the correct marketing content for these personas and so on? So it's pretty powerful tool to, to look at your personas like this. All right, so now you've got your characteristics and the behavior down, you would wanna figure out what should the scores be? How many points should we assign to different activities, right? So the key thing is here, first and foremost, do set different points for different uh, rules, right? Everything shouldn't score the same because it is of different value to the sales team and different things are closer to a sales than others, right? So look at this, the conversion you have for your different, uh, your different types of marketing material and make sure you score more points to the things that are more likely to convert a lead into a customer. <clears throat> the closer it is to the sale, the higher the score. Um, to begin with, don't just go bananas and assign rules to everything because it will be difficult to you for you to understand what rules are important and which aren't. So be focused and you can be focused by combining different rules into one. So for instance, uh, somebody opening an email, that may be something you could assign scores to, but if you combine the open of the email with a click on a link with a visit to a landing page, if you combine these things into a rule, you become much more focused, much more laser focused on what people should score on instead of just adding a lot of two points for a lot of email opens that may not make a lot of sense or that may not speak specifically to whether they're closer to converting into a paying customer. Um, you shouldn't be afraid of using negative scores. Again, what lead scoring will help you do is focus on the right people. Uh, so you want to make sure to add points, of course, for things that are relevant and close to a sale. But you also want to deduct points or remove points for things that you deem not important, not relevant for salespeople. So you may look at countries, for instance. If there are countries we're not shipping to, you would want to retract or remove points from people from those countries because it's not relevant. They may be good people, they may be willing to buy from you, but you're not shipping a product to those countries. Or uh, if you have a lot of traffic from students or people applying for jobs, you may uh, want to assign negative scores to uh, the title student, for instance, or people visiting your careers page. Uh, yeah, again, really nice to have uh, applicants to the HR team for your open positions, but not relevant for sales in the lead perspective, at least. So think about how negative scores can help you focus on the people that should really bubble to the top of your lead scoring model there. Um, another thing to think about is time frame and occurrence when you look at your scores, right? So behavior that happened recently is more interesting than behavior that happened a year ago, right? So if someone signed up for a, uh, for a, an ebook or downloaded an ebook yesterday, that's pretty interesting. If it happened uh, six months ago, they may have forgotten all about you. So think about the time frame from an action and how long that action should be of interest to you in your lead score. So you can have these points disappear after a specific uh, time frame uh, if, uh, if it's uh, relevant for you. So, um, so do, do consider that when you're adding scores. Um, and then finally, you could actually score just by having information. Again, uh, we, we mentioned this, I mentioned this previously, the fact that people have given you their phone number, uh, their title, uh, maybe more information that was optional when you gather leads, inf lead information in a form, just the fact that you have data uh, uh, can can be valuable to assign points to, right? The more contact information you have on a lead, the easier it is for sales to reach out to that lead, for instance. So just the fact that you have data, it doesn't necessarily, uh, um, it doesn't have to be a specific piece of information. You're looking for a specific title, but just the fact that you have the title could also be something to score on. All right, so let's take these learnings about um, profiles, about engagement, and try to build a scoring model. So first off, we would start with our explicit score rules. So these are the things that are based on uh, company demographic or per profile demographic. So for instance, we could look at 
the job title. If the job title is marketing manager, we will assign some points. If they work in an industry that's uh, interesting to us, we will assign some points. And if they have the correct or the ideal company size, we will as assign some points. So start building your score rules based on profiles, list the different profile characteristics you think are important, and then add points to them, together with sales to help you align your idea of what is a good lead. Then for the behavioral scores, list the things yet that you believe is helping a lead convert from a lead to a potential customer, essentially becoming a marketing qualified lead. So if people request a demo, if they sign up for your newsletter, if they visit your pricing page, uh, your blog, and so on. You want to assign points to the different things that they do that helps you identify whether they are marketing qualified and ready to be handed over to sales to be worked on. Um, and as you can see, there are different points assigned, like request a product demo that should add a lot of points because that's probably a, a good indication of that they're interested in, in at least trying out your product or potentially buying. Or are signing up for your newsletter, yeah, it's nice, but it's not as good as them signing up for a, for a demo, of course. Um, then we have this example of the email open. It's an easy thing to score on, but there are so many gray areas where that will just confuse more. So combine this, again, the combination of rules, combine this with more activities to get a better score. So if they open your email, they click links and they visit a specific page X number of times, for instance, that should give points. So start on a piece of paper, on a whiteboard, or in Excel, wherever, uh, and start building these explicit and implicit score, figuring, uh, scores, figuring out what could be good characteristics, what could be good behavioral traits, and then start assigning points. Again, there are no rights and wrongs here, but this is an exercise you should be going through with your team, with your sales colleagues, to figure out what you would wanna uh, make uh, scores on. Then when you, are ha when you have your scoring model, you should establish when a lead is actually qualified. When is a lead qualified for marketing, a marketing qualified lead, what we also call MQLs, um, meaning that they are now ready to be handed over to sales. And your model may look different than, than, than my model. Um, typically you have a scale of maybe one to 10 or one to 100, uh, depending on how um, uh, granular you wanna uh, uh, become. So it could look something like this. You say for leads from zero to 50 points, we consider these pretty cold leads. They're in our database, we're working with them, we're nurturing them with content, uh, but they're not really marketing qualified yet. It's too early for sales to get engaged. And then from 50 to 80 points, we consider these warm leads. These are, these are kind of interesting. They're starting to do more and more of our behavioral scoring, uh, the, uh, the implicit scoring there, and they're growing their lead score. And then all leads over 80, yeah, they are red hot and sales should be focusing on those. So this is just an example and you probably wanna play around with the thresholds here. The key thing is, if you're not delivering enough leads, maybe you want to lower the threshold a little. And if your sales team give you feedback saying, you know, this wasn't really qualified and uh, these didn't really know enough about our products or something like that, maybe you should increase your threshold for when leads are qualified as marketing qualified leads. So these are the, some of the things that you can play around that play around with. Is it is not a fixed model. So what to avoid when you're doing uh, lead scoring? Things to think about uh, avoiding to improve on your lead scoring. Uh, the first and most important is just setting your lead scoring and forgetting it. This is not a set of forget exercise. This is a constantly evolving organic exercise where you, based on feedback from sales and your team uh, workshops on lead scoring, you refine all the time. Remember, you're also creating new marketing material, you're doing new campaigns, you wanna make sure that you include that in your lead scoring model when you have some hero uh, pieces of content there that are great at converting uh, leads, you wanna make sure that you assign scores to them. Maybe new regions, new markets are opening up, you wanna make sure that you take uh, that profile information into your lead scoring model as well. So don't set it and forget it, keep refining it. Uh, don't forget about the negative scores. I mentioned this earlier. I can't stress enough that finding the most relevant leads has to do with obviously assigning scores to interesting actions. But likewise, it is important to 
uh, weed out the people who are for some reason not relevant to hand over to sales and to focus on. So don't be afraid of using negative scores for sure. Um, then it's this example of awarding the same points to every rule. You know, every link click is not equal. Some link links are definitely more important than others. If you just have two link clicks, one to the blog and one to the pricing page, which one would you focus on as a salesperson? Probably the one on the pricing page because that tells you that they're closer to making a decision or at least further down the customer journey or sales funnel as it is than the people just reading news or interesting articles on your blog. And uh, lastly, um, don't forget to use timeframes. A link click today is a lot more interesting than a link click that happened three months ago. So be sure to include timeframes where it makes sense um, in your lead scoring so that your lead scoring is always up to date and you can trust that the numbers you're seeing there is a fair representation of how hot your leads are. So summing up before we go into uh, email here to set up our lead scoring is uh, number one, what should you score on? Look at your customer base, look at their profiles, look at what they've been doing with your marketing material and figure out which characteristics and which behaviors to score on. That's the first thing. Do this together with your marketing team and your sales team to figure out what should be in your scoring model. Then, Figure out your sales threshold. When is a lead marketing qualified? When, at what score should P, should you alert your sales teams about these leads? Set those thresholds and you know keep them current. Make sure to update them as soon as they don't make sense anymore. Set points and individual points to the different rules you have. Uh, again, the product demo more points than the newsletter sign up. And then lastly put it into action and keep uh, refining it. So as opposed to setting and forgetting, it's designing and refining. Keep revisiting your lead scoring model and make sure that you have the relevant content in there, the relevant characteristics. So these four steps are really the steps you should be doing and repeating when working with your, your lead scoring. Okay, that was a lot of background on what lead scoring is, but it's not an easy exercise. So I wanted to spend some time getting some of these concepts uh, out there for you to think about what is actually relevant for me to look at when I'm setting up my scores. We have a lot of content and resources on the support side. I'll get back to that in a little while. We have a lot of content taking you through all of these things. And obviously, slides and recording here will be sent to you after the webinar so you can dive in and have a look at the stuff here again. Okay, so how do we set up lead scoring in eMarket here? What's there? Where do I find the different features? And what is available now? So without further ado, let's dive into eMarket tier to look at our lead scoring. <clears throat> so in eMarket tier, you will find everything related to lead scoring currently on the contacts page. This is where we have people in eMarket tier. Uh, and you will find a new option over here called lead scoring. So that's where the lead scoring magic happens. So as you click into lead scoring, you will find that we have already added two lead scoring sets, which I will briefly go through because these are already in your email tier account. That's why you're already seeing scores in your email tier account. Uh, these can be changed, modified, made inactive, deleted. They are yours to use. We just wanted to have something in there that works from the get go. So as you can see, we've created some default engagement scores and we've created some default persona score sets. Let's have a look at what we're scoring on currently. So again, we don't know your marketing content. We don't know which types of content and which types of actions you have there that are closer to a sale than others. So we've gone ahead and created some generic scoring rules based on your leads behavior, right? So when they click a link in an SMS, when they click a link in your emails, when they click a link on your landing pages, submit a form, you know, contact form, newsletter subscription form, webinar registration, whatever it is. Um, if they visit your landing pages or they visit your website, we assign scores to these, as you can see, five points for the uh, clicks, 15 points for a form submit, five points for a landing page visit, and 10 points for a website visit. So every time they do these actions, we will score them. These scores, let me just go ahead and open up uh, one, for instance, submitted it the form here. Go ahead and edit that one. You can see that we've set an occurrence on this one and a time frame. So what we're saying is 
if one of your leads have submitted any of your forms at least once in the last three months, we will assign the score. So the three months time frame is, this, is set on all of these. So going back 90 days in your database, if any of your leads did any of these things, they will have gotten these scores assigned to them. So as time passes and uh, let's say somebody visited your website uh, uh, 90 days ago, then tomorrow those scores will expire. They will disappear from their lead score. So um, those are the behavioral scores that are in your account now. You can go ahead and edit them uh, and fine tune them. There is no one size fits all lead scoring model. This is just a good kind of starting point for you to see what's there. We also have a persona score set, which is looking at profiles. So let's go ahead and look at that. So here you can see we're looking at whether there is a company name on the contact card, whether there's a country, a first name, a job title, a last name, and a phone number. And we assign two points for each of these fields. Just the fact that these fields are populated with content will, will score uh, in your lead scoring model that we have uh, added. So just let's have a look at this one. You can see we're going to say company name is set on the contact card. So we're looking for company is set and that's it. There are no time frame, not time frames for these um, uh, profile scores. So you know, if 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 uh, if you're from Sweden, uh, that's where you are, and you, and you get points for that as long as Sweden is listed on your contact card. So again, where these make sense, you can keep them or you can go ahead and edit them. We again, we really encourage you to work with these uh, content. Uh, uh, scoring rules uh, to make them fit your scoring model, what is important to you. Now let's go ahead and look at how you create scores and what the different things they do. So as you can see over here, we have an add score set. A score set is like a folder where you can put in different score rules. As you can see, we've organized uh, engagement scores in one score set and persona scores in one score set. So you can create as many score sets as you like and use these as kind of folders to organize uh, your different scoring rules. As you can see, you can activate or deactivate an entire score set, uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, it helps you uh, switch uh, easily switch on or off uh, several score rules in bulk. So let's go ahead and add a score set. We'll give it a name. Webinar demo, I can give it a description. There we go. And then I'm ready to add my first rule. So I'm gonna click add rule and give my rule a name. Um, we first are gonna look at setting some engagement scores here. So I say registered for webinar. And then I get to choose fields. And if you've ever built a filter in eMarketeer, this uh, is very familiar to you. So in the fields dropdown, you will see the things that you can score on. Engagement, anything they did, with all of the stuff you have in eMarket here and on your website. Contact fields, everything you have on the contact card, and contact lists, whether leads are belonging to specific contact lists in eMarket here. So engagement is everything that is being tracked by eMarket here, email opens, clicks, form submits, specific answers, website visits, and so on. Um, I'm going to choose form, and then I can search for a form. Search for webinar. I have a form called, a form called webinar sign up. As you can see down here, there's also the option to choose any form, which means that you can score on any form submit throughout your entire eMarketer uh, um, account. So I'm going to choose this one. And then I get to choose an operator. So should they have just visited the form? Should they have submitted the form or submitted it with a specific answer? I'm going to go with submitted. And then I can set my occurrence. Do I need them to have done this more than once, three times, and so on? I'm going to go with just once. And then you set the time frame. Okay, so they registered for a webinar in the last 30 days, for instance. That is my score rule. So I'm telling you, Mark, here, if someone submitted the webinar sign-up form, uh, they submitted it at least once in the last 30 days, that's my score rule. I'm gonna click Apply. And then over here, I have the ability to add scores, 
remove scores and set my scores. So I'm going to give 30 points to everybody that um, registered for a webinar in the last 30 days. And you click save and you have your first rule, uh, scoring rule assigned to this score set. Let's go ahead and create another rule and we're going to look at the contact card. So Swedish leads, for instance. Uh, and then again, I'm going to choose fields. I'm going to do contact fields. And as you can see, I have my contact card fields here. Look at country. I choose an operator, equals, not equals, begins with, ends with, and so on. These two are uh, interesting because in this case, I'm looking for a specific country, but I could also score on just the fact that I know the country, that a data, that a value is set in that field. That means that people with something in the country field will get a score and people without data in that field will not get a score. In this case, I'm going to go with equals Sweden. And as you can see, there are no occurrence or time frame variables to set on the contact uh, scores here. Apply, and there's my second score. I'm going to give that five points for being a Swedish company. And then lastly, I'm going to add another rule calling uh, students. Uh, and I want to assign a negative score if the contact field title equals student, for instance. Apply that and then say remove maybe 40 points. I want to make that a pretty big impact on the lead scoring there and save. So as you can see, I can build my uh, scores, uh, score rules here. I can add and remove points. If I want to edit, I just click the pencil to edit the uh, score rule and I can delete a score rule over here. Remember to click save to save your entire score set. And as you can see here, you can activate and inactivate the score set. Activating means that eMarketer will start chewing through all of your contacts in your database and assign scores based on your score sets. Now, this typically just takes a couple of minutes, but it depends on how many contacts you have in the database and how much engagement they, these contacts have made uh, and how many score sets and score rules you've created. So anywhere from a couple of minutes to uh, a little longer before you start, uh, start seeing the scores in, uh, in eMarketeer. Let me just check the questions box here. I can see that some questions have popped in. Um, let's see. If you have two active score sets, this is a question from Eric. If you have two active score sets with the same criteria, does it score double or does it recognize that it already have this in another score set? That's a good and detail-oriented question, Eric. I would imagine, I have to get back to you on that because that, I've, never, I've never actually seen that, that if you create a score rule that is identical to another score rule, the score rule would actually run twice because you've created it twice and you would get uh, twice the points. But uh, if anyone from my uh, support team or tech team are listening in, maybe they can uh, they can let me know. Just type in the uh, type in your answer as a question, and I will see it, and I can get back to Eric on that one. So I think if you create uh, the same score rules in different score sets, I think that you will get points for each of those that you create, Eric. So I hope that uh, I hope that that answered your question and, and definitely Lily was the correct answer. Eric, I will follow up on email to you if that is not the case. But for now, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so as you can see, you can create scores, you can base the scores on engagement and you can base the scores on the contact information, what we call explicit and implicit scores. Uh, there's one rule uh, that I wanna mention and that is website visits. So in the engagement, you can see website. And here you will have the websites listed where you have activate, activated the website monitor in eMarketeer. It's included in your eMarketeer Pro account. Uh, you will find it on the, uh, the settings gear. Um, as a plugin, you grab a small script and you place that script on your website. And as you email clients and they visit your website, it will start tracking where they go on your website. So if you're not seeing anything in the uh, website list here, that is because you have not um, activated the website monitor. So make sure you go ahead and do that because it's pretty cool to be able to score based on your website. Now, here's the powerful thing. Let me choose my site here. 
I can choose the operator visited, of course, and then I can choose any visit. So any visit would get five points, for instance, or I could say, you know, specific web pages should get specific scores. So for instance, uh, if I look at my site that, where the, uh, the uh, where I've had traffic, uh, for instance, I have a page called Porsche. Um, and I wanna make sure that the people that visit that page, they get a specific number of points because that's really interesting to me. So think about your pricing page or specific product pages or maybe customer case pages. These pages are a typical, a typically a good indicator that a, that a lead is pretty interested in, uh, in your product and services. They're pretty down, far down the sales funnel and these pages should maybe get a higher score than just visiting your blog or your homepage. So you can design here that people visiting avenue.com on a specific page, uh, maybe twice in the last uh, 14 days, right, should get, um, let's say, 30 points. Now, in this case, I went for a specific, uh, specific page. So I think I want to rename this one website visit Porsche page. Right. So think about your naming convention here, because if you start having a lot of score rules here, giving them good, uh, understandable names gives you an easy overview. So you don't have to go into the individual uh, scoring uh, rules to see what they're actually scoring on. OK, so now we have a pretty good understanding of how we build scores and um, combine different types of scores in score sets. Uh, right. So, Eric, I got a reply from uh, from uh, from my help uh, backup team in the support and consultants. And Thomas says it will score double if it is in two different score rules. So I was right. I was right in assuming that if you create the same score rule in different score sets um, or in different score rules, they will all assign points. Thank you guys for helping me out. Great to have a good team uh having your back there okay so now we've created scores uh score rules uh, they have been running for a couple of minutes and scores are starting to be assigned to leads you will see the scores in different places in the here of course you will see them on the contact list you will see the scores over here so 170 98 88 82 this is a representation of re-aggregated scores after all of the score rules have been running, listening to what I, what type of person they are and what they've been doing, they get the scores. You can sort by clicking the lead score column there, and then it will sort your lead list on or your contact list based on score. You will also see the score on the contact card itself. They will see the score over here. Now, having a long list of scores is obviously nice, but it's even better when you start filtering on scores. So in the filter, you will find a new filtering uh, feature or a new filtering capability in Emogeteer, and that is, of course, score. So here you can filter score greater than 75, for instance. Apply that filter, and now your list will contain leads with a higher score than 75. So if I organize here, you can see the lowest score is currently 76, and then going all the way up to the maximum number of scores. You can combine filters here. So you can say, I want a score that's, that's uh, greater than 75, and a score that is less than 100. And then, of course, I would only see the leads that have a score above 75 and below 100. So if we go back to the thresholds, the cold, warm, and hot leads, you can create filters. And as you can see, I'm going to clear the filter here. I've created a couple of filters here called cold, hot, and warm. So my cold leads, when I click that filter, uh, you can see that I'm looking at score less than 50. My warm leads, they are scoring between uh, 50 to 80. And my warm lead, my hot leads are all leads that have a score that's higher than 80. So this is a nice and easy way to create dynamic filters that will focus in on a specific group or a specific threshold in your lead scoring model there. Now, when you have created your filters, uh, I just want to highlight that maybe you weren't aware. You've created your filter, you've saved your filter and giving it, given it a name. It ends up, ends up on the filter list. 
on the cogwheel over here, you can say, uh, well, I'm gonna take one that's not there, uh, add to favorites. And when you do that, they end up over here. So this is pretty neat. And these are yours. So different uses in Emoji, of course, have different favorites there. So that's pretty uh, nice, depending on what your uh, use is. Now, when you have your leads filtered out, so in this case, I have, have case I have all of my hot leads. I can bulk action them. Uh, so I can go ahead and add them to a list or uh, do something with them inside eMarketeer pretty easily. And I can export them to a text file for further development, further data mining in Excel, or I can export them to a selection in SuperOffice, telling my, my colleagues there, okay, this selection, they, this is now the super hot leads that we have in eMarketeer. Again, remember about exporting to SuperOffice, the contacts need to exist in SuperOffice already. This is simply a way to organize the contacts in SuperOffice based on a filter, in this case, the lead score. Okay, so um, to sum up, what have we released in this first version of lead scoring? Because this is just step one in our lead scoring journey here. Um, we can now set lead scores on any engagement across all components you have in eMark tier and your website. You can score on occurrence and time frame. So how many times should something have happened within which time frame? Uh, you can score on all contact card fields, both the standard fields and all of the custom fields that you've added to your contact card. And you can score on belonging to a contact list. That's what you can currently do with the lead scoring. Then you can filter, as I just showed, you can filter on scores in below or above certain values. You can see the lead score on the contact card and on the uh, contact list. Um, but, but this is just the beginning. We are already, uh, we've already started work on the next features with regards to lead scoring uh, that we are uh, wanting to do. Uh, so just uh, a little heads up on what's coming. We're introducing the lead score history, uh, the lead score over time on the contact card. So as you saw before, you will see the, con the lead score up here in the widget, but you can also see how the lead score has developed for this specific person over time. And you can see which score rules are cur is currently, which score rules are currently adding to this individual score. So as you can see, uh, Steen ha here has a score of 45, and that's because he is in the Swedish uh, segment, and that never expires. So he gets 30 points just for being in Sweden. And then he's visited the web page uh, pricing twice, and he submitted a contact us form. These are in the engagement scoring rule sets, and you can see that they, these points will expire at a specific date. So when they expire, obviously his score will go down and these specific scoring elements will disappear from this list. So this is a nice view of understanding what, uh, uh, which rules or which behavioral or characteristic based scores have been assigned to this specific person. You will also start seeing lead scoring pop up in other contact lists throughout eMarketeer. So in reports like the uh, email report here, for instance, we will indicate the lead scores of the different persons to give you an overview of who's hot and who's not in, in, in the, between the people that are engaging in your content. So this is stuff what we've just started. More is coming. We will have scores affecting automations. We will have automations being able to set scores and much, much more. So stay tuned for more updates on lead scoring. But for now, now, make sure to start working with your lead scoring model, figuring out what to score on, and so on. Um, let's see. Oh, here's a question from René. Can you tell more about what's coming and what to expect in version two? So there was always all, already a, a preview of that, René. Uh, so uh, thanks for uh, for asking that question. So what is currently being worked on is is the uh, the uh, the leads over time and the lead score. Uh, the lead score over time and the lead score in different lists. And we will see that probably already after summer. And then we will dive into looking at how automations should be impacted by scores and how automation should be able to add scores and so on. So that is uh, that is next, next step there. Hope that that covered your, uh, your question there. Um, so as mentioned, this is not easy. <laughs> lead scoring, you know, setting the lead score in eMarketer is pretty straightforward. It's just click, click, done. You can set your score rules and you can activate them. You can filter on them, easy peasy. The the challenge here is not really the technicalities of, of technicalities of adding lead scoring. 
it is more how do you decide what to score on. And I can really encourage you to check out some of the content that we have on our website, the support website. So if you go to uh, the question mark up here and you go to online documentation, check out our support site. We have a lot of stuff focusing on lead scoring right now, obviously. So you will see a tutorial how to set up lead score rules in uh, eMarketeer. So this is really taking you through the bits and pieces that we've been covering today, how you are setting up lead scoring, what you can score on, how you do it. Everything is explained here in this article. Another really cool piece of content is the what should you score on. Um, basically covering uh, how to create your lead scoring model, what to think about, what is implicit score, what is explicit score, um, how do you create your personas and so on. So a lot of content here that you will see from the presentation and you will have on this page is pretty good starting points. There is also a full rundown of our default score rules in eMarketeer. So all of the scores that you already have in your eMarketeer account, the engagement score set and the persona score set, they're listed here. How many points have we have signed? What is the time frame that we've set and so on. So check out the uh, support.eMarketeer.com site and look at uh, the lead scoring uh, articles that have been released. There's some great, great content for you there. And of course, you're not alone. We're here to help you. So reach out to our support team or your consultants or your e-marketer reseller uh, to get more help with setting up your uh, lead scores and filtering your leads there in, uh, in e-marketer. We are definitely here to help you and we wanna see how you, um, uh, how you uh, work with scores and what it helps you do together with your sales team. And with that said, I will thank you very much for your time today. Bye-bye.